So we're going to do a walk around, just do an overview of various systems. This is a Legend, all aluminum, deluxe, flat front uh, trailer. Um, so we've, we've adapted and done some things to this trailer to make it uh, to our liking. And when I first uh, described the back of the trailer with the overhang here, I forgot to mention the um, reverse camera, which comes in pretty handy for viewing in the back uh, as you're traveling, plus as you're backing up. Uh, pretty good nighttime vision as well. That little black round unit is a UV sensor. It's a humidity and temperature sensor, which uh, talks to the Victron system, uh, which means we can access it on our iPhone anywhere. Uh, we've got, I think we have six or seven of these in various locations in the trailer. Uh, underneath, on top, uh, at the kitchen, where the water pipes are, you know, things, places that matter where we want to just determine whether we've got a frost freezing problem or not. There's the through hull, we call it, in boating. Uh, it's a gland, which, uh, where the Starlink cable goes into the, through the aluminum. But it's water impermeable, so we don't have water coming in people always wonder how do you get you know your cable into the trailer and i see a lot of people try and do it on the roof with caulking and you know certain things uh this seems to me to be a really good way to do it um now if we need to move our starlink further away uh right now it's a permanent installation on the roof i don't know if you can see it yeah there it is um, but if we have to disconnect that dish and move it further, uh, we use this through hull thing here, which is a hatch, uh, you know, screwable, unscrewable um, opening. And we have a rubber plug that we fish a really long Starlink wire through, and we, we can put the Starlink anywhere we want. And we still have. Um, protection from water ingress. I've also installed a sliding uh, ventilation grill um, just where the the um, electrical inverter is just to allow for air to come in and you can see the the angle above that's uh, kind of best practices just to keep the water from flowing down along the surface of the trailer and possibly uh, coming in. I've done the same thing with all the windows. You can see even though we have an awning, etc. I've also put this angle above to mitigate the water. Can be a problem and if it's really pelting rain and it's very windy the rain can come straight at the trailer and that, that actually helps. Uh, one other thing we did was I added zerk fitting grease nipples to the hinges. You can see I've actually put what they call grub screws or set screws to keep the tumbler inside from rotating. Um, so the only thing that really rotates is the hinge bar with the grease fitting. So it sort of acts like a bearing and we can remove this little plastic cap that I tapped in. I tapped in a, the grease fitting and then put a plastic cap above it. So now we can grease these hinges regularly and they're not noisy and they won't wear out. Just one extra little tidbit of detail. Um, not too sure how many people know about these smart plugs, but they're way uh, more effective, better units than the Marinco that are out there, the round yellow ones. They have better um, metal, bigger metal contacts. They lock in and they're more positive, more of a positive stop. They're way expensive, but if you're going to do it once, better to do it once. 
um, and if it's your power that you're using and depending on, it's a pretty important thing. So I would highly recommend spark plugs. Um, let's see what else we've got here. We have Zip D awnings. Uh, I'll get into that in another video, but they are OEM awnings on an Airstream, and we ordered them from Chicago custom from Zipti and they took our profile we sent them a diagram of the profile of our trailer and they custom fabricated the height and the angle and the curvature etc and you can see what they've done here I, I'm not going to open them but uh, they're fantastic again they're not cheap but, but they're light and they're designed smartly and I would highly recommend them again um, so you know if you're gonna build one of these things out and you're gonna live in it and you're gonna depend on it for your livelihood and your you know lifestyle it's probably a good thing to put your resources into it and get the best thing you can because sure enough you're gonna have to replace it uh, you'll also notice uh, as we go along I've installed a whole bunch of these flip down things and if you're not in the sailing world you won't know but these are mast steps these are things you be fastened to a sailboat mast and to climb up the rig to service the rig um, so I've used these as to hang hoses to step on to climb up to the roof we've installed them everywhere where we need them there's another one um, really fantastic units all stainless or these ones are actually brass and they're plated but you can see we've we've put them at stair intervals step intervals to climb to this to the roof for servicing so we don't really have a ladder we just have these things so moving along uh, the next thing we've got here is a looks like a deck fitting not typical to RV industry but very typical to sailboats and so what it is is a deck fitting water fill um, so what you see in most RVs is these um, doors with a lift up thing and a couple of openings valves that one's for city and one's for gravity water so uh, I found the quality of those isn't quite what I want so we sort of adapted a sailboat deck fitting um, this thing has a, a keyed, um, unscrewable uh, cap here that comes out. Uh, you can't really just undo this unless you have a tool. So there's a bit of security, um, which helps. And then it's a big, I think it's inch and a quarter hose that just gravity feeds water into our, I think we have 180 liter water tank underneath the settee works fantastic and it's secure and it looks cool uh, the next thing in line I'm not sure if people have heard of these either uh, it's called an Aquor water hydrant and again it's it's uh, not something you see in RVs but you see them on boats and it's a hydrant it's a it's a spring activated hydrant and again you can't mess with it unless you have proper gear and so this is the gear that you use with it it's a it's an insert for this aquar hydrant so basically what you do is you shove this thing in and you rotate it to about here or to here and you have a, a valve shove it in sorry you couldn't see what I was doing shove it into about here or here and you have a valve that you can you can screw a hose to this and open this valve up and you have pressured water coming in but without this uh, attachment you have this thing doesn't work because you can't disengage the spring um, so it's a fantastic thing uh, a company out of Port Townsend Washington has it and um, I would highly recommend that it also works uh, not just with water coming in but with water coming out and I'll show you that as we move along here 
So then we put in a, a Furion hot water, on-demand hot water tank, or hot water heater. It's not really a tank, it's just a heater. Um, I was quite creeped out when I cut this big opening in the side of the trailer. But when we had this trailer built, we actually had them frame in around the perimeter of this to the exact dimension of what we needed. So it was a little less intimidating because I knew there was framework there. Um, but, you know, when I first cut the hole, 18 inch by 18 inch big hole in the side of the trailer, it was a little bit creepy. So, but so far this thing has worked fantastic. Uh, highly recommend it again. Um, we'll do another video which gets into it in detail. So further along, uh, we have another Aquor. But this is the water coming out. So this, this is our outdoor shower right here. So you pop this off, put this valve in, open it up, and then you have control over your water for, for a shower. Um, now you're wondering where the valves are. Well, you can hear our furnace. There's our furnace outlet right there. That's it. That's the outlet for the furnace. And I'll show you that in a minute. So here, here we have uh, a hatch, a side hatch for access uh, to what we called our wine cellar. So further in there is our furnace. It's a Propex furnace. And what you're looking at right here is uh, our gray water drain. Uh, I, we got that from a hose supplier that supplies the fire fighting industry. And it's a large diameter uh, gray water hose dump. Fantastic, works really well. And then you'll see in behind there's a valve. Not sure if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can get closer. Mm, not quite sure if you can see. Yeah, no, I don't think you can see it. But there's a valve in there that changes uh, temperature of the water from cold to hot. And you can preset that. Just reach in and preset it. Turn on uh, hot and cold right here. And boom, you have hot water, cold water, shower, dog wash. You can wash the trailer, anything you want. So super smooth, super easy. Um, way more robust than what you see in the RV industry with those little doors that are plastic and you know all the little uh, PVC pipes and kind of it looks pretty crappy. Anyhow, so this is very simple. It's secure. Nobody can mess with it. Uh, clean lines. So super happy with that. There's another one of those Salem vents. We showed you that earlier. Uh, that's at the kitchen in the galley. So it lets air in and out. Uh, very important thing. And then here's our furnace outlet. So that Propex furnace has a hose which uh, takes the water in. Which uh, if, I, if we climb under, maybe we can see that get a good view you can see that that's the inlet right there and that's the two lines coming down from the propane um, furnace and the other line is the hot air the exhaust which comes out here and then through this sort of plate and that's it end of story so everything all the combustion is done outside the air in and air out is done outside uh, so you, there's no carbon monoxide or humidity that's pumped into the trailer and this is our simple exhaust it actually doesn't get that hot it says caution hot but it doesn't get that hot and then when we're not using it we cork it up just to prevent wasps uh, and anything else from going in there but yeah and a super simple system um, very effective easy to maintain low clearance highly recommended to anybody um, let me see here what else have we got um, there's our Mesa siding which came with the trailer it's kind of a nice detail 
and then we have that checker plate at the front quite a ways up um, you know prevents road rash etc uh, and then we have a propane twin 30 pound propane tanks here and a spare full-size spare that we've covered with sunbrella fabric and I didn't like any of the propane um, rigs to hold propane tanks out there they look pretty flimsy so we decided to build one so we use this 8020 material which I've described earlier uh, the aluminum structural t-slot rail system and we clamped using uh, bolts and nuts and we clamped a couple of uh, rails to our A-frame at the front of the trailer and then we used um, this white polymer material I'm sure people have seen that before and those tanks are mounted in the in that white polymer material I'll get into this in another film but uh, works really well very stable very secure and uh, I'll just peel this back so you can have a look but you can see we see it yeah so you can see our setup pretty straightforward um, put on a nice gauge which tells us the uh, pressure on the propane with a really nice regulator and we we did copper pipe which I like better than steel because it doesn't rust and copper doesn't break it just dents it just impacts a little bit but it doesn't break it's quite resistant to breakage because it's flexible but it's it's the best material I think for gas um, but one thing that copper could use is a bit of shielding and if you go to buy copper shielded copper it's hugely expensive and it comes in huge rolls of like 600 feet and that didn't work for us so my solution was to use some of this nitrile tubing and just sleeve the copper after we you know as we installed it we got a gas fitter in here and he was happy to do that so we used this nitrile tubing hose and sleeved the copper to protect it all underneath not sure if you saw it underneath or not but let's have another look and we'll show you see if you can see it yeah there we are so if you see that you can see our valves right there and then you can see the sleeved copper which is tucked way up under so it's not going anywhere there it is there you can see it tucked up underneath you can see further valves further down so it's super simple super tucked away very protected and yeah I'd highly recommend doing that if you're going to do your own gas fitting and install propane so anyhow you can see that large aluminum frame member underneath um, makes for a strong trailer I think that thing is six inches by three inches something like that super strong so you know when you're buying a trailer you got to look for things like that how is it supported how is the trailer framed underneath um, you can see our Anderson hitch I'll get into that in another film as well um, here's our here's our gray water dump right here again it's a fire you can see it lens is acting up let's see yeah it's oh there we go there's our gray water dump um it's about it we're losing our, our focus i think oh there we go yeah we got it back and then we have an electrical box there's our electrical uh, access box right there which again is easily accessible all labeled um, you know figured out 
So there you have it for now and um, hopefully that helps people out there who are trying to work this stuff out.